Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Mahmoud Alode, and in this video we'll be talking about a new product development and we will talk about also the life cycle strategies, product life cycle strategies. First of all, what we need to do, we need to talk about what is a new product development. New product development is providing a new product or the development of original product uh, or maybe maybe a product improvements or product modification and a new brands through the firms on our uh, research and development efforts. So whether you are providing a product or an original product, you do improvement on the product or modification of the product using the research and development efforts, that is called a new product development. So the research and, and uh, research and development is not the only way to have a new product. Uh, new products can be obtained via acquisition or development. So acquisition means that you're looking into a, a product that is already in the market and you are very happy about that product, but you could buy that product to put it under your company's name. Uh, so that would be an example of acquisition. So looking into an idea uh, such as, for example, recently uh, Facebook purchased Instagram. So now this is what is called acquisition. So the idea came through a different company. But uh, when you uh, uh, when you see an interest in that product, you could have it under your company. Or maybe it could be through the research and development efforts, as I mentioned. New products uh, in particular uh, suffer from high failure rates. So it's not easy to compete in the market these days. So most of the products that are new, they're most likely to fail. And again, this is just a high failure rate. And uh, there are several reasons. So there are could be uh, wrong naming, wrong strategy, and so on. So it would be helpful for operations managers to be able to understand all these strategies to launch a new product or a new service. Uh, so, for example, uh, here's uh, two examples, one from Colgate and the other one from Microsoft. Microsoft uh, Zune, uh, it's basically a product that produced by Microsoft uh, to be alternative for Apple, uh, for Apple iPod. However, because Apple is a strong in the market and they're more user friendly and uh, they are more into the music industry, uh, Zone basically uh, failed to take off. So that's an example uh, and just it's hard to compete with a the, with the competitor that you have in the market. Uh, the other example is Colgate uh, kitchen entries. These are basically, uh, they were unsuccessful because they're using the, the same brand name for toothpaste uh, and using it again in a food uh, product, that was a mistake. So uh, customers did not find toothpaste uh, very um, appetizing uh, to be used as in the, in the food, as a food product. So let's take a look into these here. Uh, I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it, why these products failed. So the one on the left side is the ketchup. And this is, of course, this is usually what we see from that brand. Um, Smuckers is basically, that's a, a jelly basically a product. So you don't expect a ketchup to be in that container. So maybe the container, maybe it's, the customer is familiar with uh, different products uh, than a product. Uh, let's take a look into the right side, two pictures. There's a buttermilk shampoo and fruit of the loom laundry detergent. Of course, these are also, uh, the name could be um, uh, not an excellent way to brand this. So taking a look into the major steps for new product development, the product, new product development starts with idea generation. So you could generate so many ideas, say, okay, well, uh, we could do this and that. And then the next step would be idea screening. So you screen the idea, say, okay, well, uh, which would be the best idea to select? And then you uh, develop that product and test it. That's what we call the concept development and testing. And then marketing strategy development, you have to have a, a great marketing strategy in order to market your product. And then moving into the business analysis where you look into the uh, competitors, the SWOT analysis, the rate of return, then product development. 
and you product you do the product development and then you do some test marketing and then last thing would be commercializing uh, commercializations uh, basically where you send the product to the market so let's start with the first one uh, first stage is idea generation which is could be from internal uh, such as the research and development efforts, or it could be from external through your supply chain, such as customers, competitors, distributors, or suppliers. So that's where there are a source of idea, how you can come up with different ideas. Uh, so some companies like 3M, uh, they encourage uh, and support and actually reward new product ideas and innovation. They say, okay, if you come up with a new idea, you will be rewarded uh, X amount of dollars. So that's an example of a company who encourage people, whether they're internal uh, customers or external, internal customers means the, their employees or their external customers who are uh, 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 outside. Here's another company, PNG, as well. They have developed a, a website in particular to uh, to encourage people to submit some ideas to them, and um, hopefully these ideas will be taken place. Uh, number two, stage number two, uh, idea screening, a product development um, cost increases dramatically in the later uh, stages. Idea are evaluated against criteria and most are eliminated. So what you need to do when you do this, uh, first of all, you have to select the best idea. And we've learned uh, so many techniques that we could use to select ideas. One of them is multi-weighted uh, selection criteria. That would be a great way to select the best idea. But keep in mind that the product development will increase in the later stages. So that may be the last phase where you not going to spend a lot of money just basically selecting the best idea and screening the ideas. And most of these ideas will go and you will stick with very few, maybe one uh, to go with it. Number three, stage number three, concept development and testing. What you want to do here, you want to provide detailed version of a new product ideas. What is the provide, what is the detail of your, your, uh, your product? And also what you need to do, you need to involve the customer and have them uh, uh, comment on that concept and that idea. So they have to evaluate your ideas. And then the number four, where is the marketing strategy? You have to develop a marketing strategy to market your product, the target market, uh, product uh, positioning and sales, share profit goals for the first few years. Uh, you wanna look into the pricing as well, uh, marketing budget. Uh, you want to look into long run uh, sales and profit goals and the marketing mix strategy. So there are different ways for these ideas. Number five is business analysis, where you need to look into the sales, the cost, the profit, uh, projections. These are the things that you will decide whether to go with it or not. Number six in here, where we actually start developing the first form of that product, which is called the product development or prototype of the product in testing that prototype. And there are so many software these days, such as the CAD drawing, where you could uh, uh, use the computer aided design to create the graphics. And it, it is very helpful. There is increase in productivity, it create a database of, for manufacturing information and product specification, uh, provide possibility of engineering and cost analysis of on proposed design. So there's so many things that you could do on that part. Um, where you could use these CAD designs to do estimation, to do a product specification and so on. Also, if a product uh, of, 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 if a CAD drawing could have affinity element analysis, that also could reduce uh, time to market because that's gonna help you to perform simulation that end in the design analysis and commercialization of a new product. So basically you're going to test virtually test your product, uh, the strength of the product and many other things. All right, now moving into number seven. Well, number seven is test uh, test marketing. What you want to do, you want to uh, standard test markets, uh, and you have to uh, maybe control test market or simulated test market. So you probably uh, talk about you know providing the product into the market and asking your customers, what do you think? So this 
it's basically a test. It's not going to be fully marketing, but we're going to test the market and see what people do. Uh, so here's an example of a test marketing for the KFC. Test market, it's a new uh, Kentucky grilled chicken uh, product for three years. Look at that. They tested for three years before rolling it out nationally. Uh, and so they're uh they and they're they're basically making sure that they're gonna succeed in this so they need to get enough time to put it in the market people know about it and this is what the uh, chain president say we had to get it right uh, which means that take your time as operations manager you don't want to rush and say oh well, we have a new product let's uh, fully produce it and put it in the market. No. Well, you need to introduce it. And this is what we call the test marketing before you do the marketing. Number eight, stage number eight, commercialization, which is introducing the new product to the market. Uh, and of course, this there will be a high cost for that. Uh, just as an example here, the, Ma, uh, the Mac Cafe uh, from McDonald's, it cost uh, about $100 million in advertising just to let people know that they have a different a new product than just the food uh, they, they offer coffee these days. So they spend about 100 million for that. Something we need to consider about it is the sustainability and how uh, how we could make our product not harmful to the to the uh, economy, to the to the uh, to the environment. So no harm ecologically to uh, the system that support human existence. So we need to, to consider the sustainability and the impact on the environment. And we do several techniques such as the cradle to grieve assessment, which is basically, we're going to talk about this in more details and uh, the few uh, slides, uh, uh, end of life programs, and the three R's, reduction of cost and material, reusing parts, and recycling. Uh, so I'm going to stop the video right here, and I will uh, continue on sustainability and product development strategies from environmental friendly strategies. I'll see you in another video.